So you may have been wondering this, maybe not overtly, but you're probably thinking, do they ever let go? Maybe some time has passed and you're thinking, all right, like, you know, time has gone past, like we're past this, just leave me alone. So in actual fact, does the narcissist ever let go of you? This is what we're talking about in the video, my friends. Hello everyone and welcome back. I hope that you're all doing really well. So, do narcissists ever let go? Or is it that they keep holding on to you, wishing and hoping, circling back, maybe not wishing and hoping, but they kind of like leave you for a little bit, put you on ice and then think, oh, it's okay for them to come back whenever they want to come back. So basically making you like a doormat, they can use you whenever they need to, they can pick you up and put you down whenever they want to. In actual fact, a lot of that is true, but this is all to do with their attachment disorder. But in this video, I really want to explore, do they ever let go? I mean, what is this attachment about? But my friends, before we get into the video, I just want to mention that I do go live on this channel every single Tuesday. Oh yes, my friends, every single Tuesday I am live. If there is something on your mind or maybe you want to get answers to, please know that by joining the live stream, you've got a supportive community and I could be answering your question. Guys, I'd love to see you there. Check it out for yourselves. It's absolutely free. You have nothing to lose. So come on over. I'd love to see you there. Okay, so does the narcissist ever fully let go? Now, this is a question that has been asked by many of my clients, those that are kind of going through it, like, you know, maybe you are out of this situation, maybe you are out of this relationship, and it's been quite some time, and you're probably thinking, like, why do they just not leave me alone, or why do they still keep coming back? It could have been, all right, it could have been that actually they were the ones that have left, they're the ones that have ghosted you, and suddenly, out of nowhere, there they are again. And so you think, what is this? What is going on here? Like, you know, we are, to, you know, like in normal, typical kind of relationships, when you kind of break up or when you no longer want to be with one another, like both parties know where they stand, like what's going on. And you kind of just leave each other. You know, you might stay friends for a little bit, but then actually, you know, as you move on, you're like, okay, well, enough's enough like we're going to move on we're going to meet other people and so indeed you do but you see none of this happens in these types of relationships this is one thing that you have got to realize that actually this does not happen in these types of relationships and the reason why is because there's a few reasons why okay first of all narcissists all right they work in a cycle okay they've got a cycle of behavior and it's kind of like they stick to that cycle of behavior. And once you understand it, once you get it, like why they are doing this, this will make it so much easier for you to understand this whole entire scenario with the narcissist. So first of all, right, as you guys know, they work in the cycle value, devalue, discard, value, devalue, discard, all right? And that's literally, that's literally what is going on. And so they will cycle through these these stages all right so if you think about it so you've you've been devalued you've been discarded and now they come back because they're valuing you and you're going to ask me well why do they do that Anushka why do they work through these types of cycles now in psychology okay this is all to do with attachment okay an attachment disorder that each and every one of them basically possess so Think about it, like think about the whole kind of recipe of this toxic relationship. So, you know, they're, they're full on right at the beginning. They will mirror you. They will love bomb you. Okay, in most relationships, sure, like I know it starts off being like amazing and they want you. But this carries on for a while. They become obsessive about you. They put you on a pedestal. And it's almost as though they are like going forward, like they are literally obsessing over you. And this feels amazing. This feels really good. Like someone is giving you that amount of attention. Like let's not beat it around the bush because it is. It's really nice when someone does do that, right? And then over time, this changes. Then it goes basically into gaslighting mode for the majority of the relationship or the interaction that you have with them. 
So this is kind of like when they know that you are hooked, when they know that you are into them, they that you have this push and pull effect, you almost don't know where you stand, but it's always about you serving them emotionally and psychologically in most cases, because it's you that is trying to validate them, trying to make them feel good all the time. So if you look at this, okay, this isn't how a relationship goes because you never actually grow you know, from different stages in the relationship. It's almost as though it starts on full off, full on, and and you know, you just you just go down, like it gets worse as time progresses. So it makes you more dependent or codependent onto them. And then um over time it's kind of like this separatedness and it's like you serving them emotionally. And that isn't that isn't what happens, that isn't normal behavior that isn't a normal recipe for a relationship so so my friends they value you this is the the beginning stages they will put you on a pedestal they will love bombing they'll mirror you okay they trap you into this interaction with them then they devalue you because they know that they've got you so they pull away and they then start to gaslight you and then start to manipulate and control you because they want to know that you are not going to leave, that you accept them for who they are. And then the devaluing is the silent treatment. And then the discard, usually in most cases, is not a discard, it's just a silent treatment. And I say it like it's just a silent treatment. I'm not, I'm not trying to downplay because like literally the silent treatment is so hurtful. Like I completely understand. So what I'm trying to say is they detach themselves from you. So in this case, if you think about it, do they fully ever let go? If you think about it, this is a prolonged case of the silent treatment because at some point they will be coming back. Usually at these points, this is where the smear campaign happens. This is where they're probably flirting with others, trying to get new, supplying new attention. So they are pulling back from you. It's almost as though they put you on ice um, so that they can come back later. Um, they have to devalue you. They have to completely destroy you before they leave. And the reason why they do this is because they think that you're going to be waiting for them. When they have destroyed you, when they have literally left you on the floor crying, not understanding what's going on, they have told you how awful you are, like how they can't be with you. And they leave. And you're so destroyed inside because it is so hurtful. The things that they say, the things that they do, literally, it's like so, it's such impulsive behavior. And it's called the roller coaster effect, where in psychology we look at this, it's like literally your emotions are on a roller coaster. So when they're leaving, they leave you broken on the floor because you know what happens? This is why they think that when they come back, you are going to be this broken person on the floor, like literally you are just waiting for them. And it's like they swoop in to be your savior. And this is indeed what will happen. And these periods of time where you are left scratching your head, confused, trying to look for answers, trying to understand why this person has left, why they have ghosted you, why they have just literally pulled away from you. Like you have done nothing. You have been the best version of yourself for them, you know, and, and you just don't understand what is going on. But that's why they do it because they leave this confusion. It's undefined. You don't know whether you're together or you're not. This is done especially. Oh yes, my friends, there is an agenda behind it. And yes, this is done especially because what they want to happen is that they want to come back in. Usually, right, I've heard this in so many scenarios, like especially in client work, where the narcissist will leave their belongings at your property or somewhere where, you know, you they have access to or you, you live at. And they will leave their, their stuff there because they know it will give them um, an excuse or an opportunity to be able to come back. And there's that little crack through the door. It gives them an excuse to be able to contact you. And then as they contact you again, they're like, oh, I've made some sort of communication with this person. So if they're answering me back, that means that they do actually still care for me. This is their way of thinking. Okay, this is how they think. So they do this because they don't fully bond to you. 
they feel like people are transactional and that you serve a purpose that you that you are going to be there waiting for them all right that you are someone that is going to accept them no matter what so this is the purpose that you serve this is this is what they believe will happen and sometimes in some cases when we are not aware of what's going on you see when they come back we are so happy to hear from them we are so grateful that they have got in contact because this ends the pain for us but what you quickly find out is that things go back to the way that they were even though the narcissist has said oh i'm going to change I'm going to be different. I'm so sorry for what has happened. They are still the same person. They've done, they've done no work on themselves. So this person has not changed. Nothing is different. But for us, the way we accept them back in, all right, is because we feel like this person has missed us, that they have changed, that they want us. But what we don't see is actually that they are just telling us what we want to hear because we don't want to feel that pain and all that they are doing is they are recycling us they're recycling their relationship because they know that they are going to get attention and validation from you and again you serve a purpose this is the transactional value of this relationship this is what it means for the narcissist they don't want a real relationship with you they just come back because they want something from you you serve a purpose they don't connect to anything. They don't have a bond with anything. Look, if you think about it, this person doesn't even have a bond with themselves. They're not connected to themselves. They don't understand themselves. So how can they then do that for somebody else? How can they then do that for you in this connection? They can't. This is why you have transactional value in this relationship. It's a conditional love. This love is based on conditions. And just added to the fact there that what we're talking about is an attachment disorder where this person can't connect to you or attach themselves in a healthy way, but they also can't detach themselves from you. So this is why they do cycle back around. And in most cases, they do. And it's really important for you to understand that this isn't anything that you have done. This is them. But what happens is this ends with you. If you want this relationship to be over, if you're not going to accept them back and all of their antics and everything, then it really is on you. OK, you are the one that decides whether this person is in your life or not. And I know this is one of the hardest things. I completely understand. It's so hard to say no or go away to someone who you once loved and maybe still have love for. But at the end of the day, if this person isn't treating you right, how can you go forward? How can you accept this person into your life? You can't. This is just going to damage you. So really do think about this, you know, when you are going forward. All right. If you are struggling with this, please know that I do offer one to one consultations. I've also got a journal club and a mentorship. And if you're interested, please see the description box below. I've also got a Discord server, which is absolutely free for you to join community of like minded individuals. Please see the link in the description box. Guys, thank you so much for joining and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.